Hello, hello, hello. Ed, I've just come back from a walk. It's spring here, September, the beginning of spring is September 2024. And I saw a few people cutting their lawns today, this morning. It was very much a will it rain day or will it stay dry day but i took my sunglasses forever hopeful that the sun would pop out and it did so it was a lovely walk however in my next book that i'm reviewing today the weather is completely different it is set in in a des desert type situation. Uh, this book is historical fiction and it's set in South Africa. And I'll just get the book, shall I? Yes, it's a paperback read. And I actually won this, uh, actually I won the whole series and there is six books in the series and I've read five of them so far. It's taken a long time. I'm not one of these people that um, decides to read one book after the other in a series. I like to... Hmm, a little taste of everything you know what I mean we don't need to stick to the same thing all the time do you it gets quite boring doesn't it so here we go here's um, the book I'm reviewing called Langborn there's this is the name of uh, uh, the surname of two brothers Okay, right, well, let's get started. Langbourne by Ellen P. Lindau. The shorter tell of it is, both boys can see their future lo looks bleak if they stay where they are. So a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity arises where they can set sail to South Africa to practice an idea that they are hoping will work. It's really remarkable following these two boys, Morris, 16, and David, 15, and seeing their life unfold. Both boys are extremely intelligent and innovative and bounce ideas and situations off each other with awe-aspiring effect. I really can't believe that this is based on a true story because the ideas they come up with is outstanding. Although this is a historical fiction book, Morris and David are extremely funny together, which gives this book a feel-good opposed to the serious stuff. As with most historical fiction, I learned quite a bit about the South African culture. And I was fascinated by the click language. And I went through the rabbit hole of YouTube to find out more on this unique language. And for example, I went something like this. Wouldn't it be great? Wouldn't it be great to have such a language, a secret language like that, like that, that only you and another person 
knows. Yeah, well, these South Africans have got it right. You know, they can, they they know how to do it, don't they? Sounds a bit like a horsey. Giddy up. Okay. Right, well, you sort of get the idea. I was also delighted to add another Afrikaans word to my vocabulary. Hmm. Now I'm going to butcher this word. I'm so sorry, but, um, you know, like any other reader, I'm a reader. <laughs> This is totally out of my comfort zone doing these YouTube videos. So, the word is going more. And I didn't put what it actually meant. <laughs> but there we go. I tried my best and hey, give me kudos for actually trying. And I was terribly excited when I read the Afrikaans dessert, milk turd. I enjoyed the scenery, the safari animals, and some of those were scary. And I certainly wouldn't like to encounter them. For example, the lions and the tigers and a few more. I'm quite happy looking at them in zooms. And I'll just play around with this um, uh, tablet for a minute, but I did actually pick up two quotes. I mean, I could find them in the book themselves, but I like to be creative, you know. So um, I stuck these two on Instagram, so bear with me for a minute or two. This one here that I'm going to show you, I really enjoyed. In fact, it, it's, it's a good one for, say, like a Monday, the start of something. Uh, today is Tuesday, but hey, it could be Monday on the other side of the world, for all I know. Or it could be Monday in the future, couldn't it? Or it could be Monday in the past. Or it could be a Monday on a Wednesday. <laughs> Who knows? Anyway. Here it is. Oh, can you see that? Don't know if you can see it. I'll read it to you anyway, so you've got more of an idea of what it says. And a new day, a new adventure, a renewed excitement and hope. Now, isn't that lovely? I do like Ellen Nadell's um, way of putting things. And I'll just um, go along to the next one, um, which I think was genius. I really do. It was another sort of like um, signs and code sort of language. And uh, in this book, they actually use it a lot, um, mainly because um, in in the in in this book anyway, they didn't have any other sort of communication from town to town apart from telegrams. You know the old telegrams and telegraph machines. So they had to, uh, both brothers had to communicate if one was in another town. So they made up these codes so that nobody else could understand their business and what they were going on about because yeah, you don't want people to know your business, do you? Gosh, no, that would be no good at all. That's not PC at all. 
so anyway here it goes and i'll just i'll just recite this right ho so let's call cigarettes cats because they both can they both start with the letter c and i'll just uh, show you um that too uh, yeah don't know if you can see that very well but uh, these are early very early ones of my instagram stuff so um yeah pretty basic but it gets the message out there and that's all i'm worried about so yes yes okay now um i'll just go back to uh the finish now okay so this was a five star review and recommend to all who appreciate historical fiction the main setting being of course south africa and this book goes deeply into the tobacco industry which i found extremely interesting especially the problem solving the two brothers encountered in the way they communicated trust was very strong and prominent with these two to make a successful pro profitable business and on that note i just want to say please um like and subscribe and uh, comment if you want to and i'll see you on the next one bye for now